Today I thought it would be fun to review my sparring footage with karate combat gloves for the first time with you. I have not seen this footage before. I have not watched myself work with these gloves before. And I thought it would be a unique experience for me to look, make critiques about myself, and have you guys be able to follow along. Now the first thing I'm going to note is obviously the sparring is going to be dialed down. The intensity is not going to be that that we would have if we were using 10 ounce or 16 ounce gloves. You have to do that, in my opinion, to be safe and make sure both partners are not taking unnecessary abuse. Both of our styles are very crisp, very clean. We spar together lots. We're able to put in the rounds and very rarely have somebody get hurt. But with these new gloves and the fact that we haven't trained in them before together, it's still worth dialing down that intensity. So what you're gonna note is both of us trying to maintain that good clean style. You will see my sparring partner Siraj, who is a very skilled individual. You're gonna see him throw some kicks to the thigh and you might go, oh, why is he doing that? But obviously that's his style. I've told all my sparring partners, spar like normal and just recognize that I'm kicking the calf and you will not be necessarily attacking that area, but I'm fine with that. I'm fine if I get hit to the thigh. Is this going to be my go-to fight style for the upcoming competition I have, the upcoming opponent? No, not necessarily. But right now, just getting used to these smaller gloves. I have not spent a lot of time using them throughout the duration of this camp. So sometimes it's just good to put them on and get used to the defense. I did the exact same thing in my Karate Combat debut back in June. Did my normal work for about seven, eight weeks with the bigger gloves, making sure I was staying safe. And then at the very end, just put the small ones on just to get used to them and make those fine tune adjustments, mostly on the defensive aspect. Now let's just start looking a bit more in general at what I'm doing. I'm gonna give myself a few critiques here, hopefully learn, make adjustments. That's a move I love. Fake the low kick, come to the body shot. Something I do note with these gloves is it's much scarier to throw body hooks because that thumb is completely exposed. Trying to get a little bit better at that head movement, that little tip back, just making sure that instead of always trying to block punches, I'm getting my head out of the way. Just like that, just a little lean back. So many of the guys in MMA are utilizing that so well. Nice roll through on the spinning back fist there from Siraj. Once I caught his kick, I threw it. He utilized the momentum that I created. Smart, smart movement. There's round number one done. It's always hard to gauge mistakes at this pace because we're both going so slow and you don't often make massive mistakes at this slow speed when you're at a high level. It's more so when I watch my fast, hard sparring footage then I go, ooh, there's some more mistakes. But right now, this is about trying to really perfect our movements and just get comfortable with these small gloves. Even things like that, throw the scissor knee up to head level, but maintain massive distance between you and your partner. So there's nobody getting hurt. I really believe that when you have high level sparring partners and both guys can go in, you can spar hundreds of rounds together and so rarely, take even a tiniest little bang or bump that you're just gonna learn so much more because you'll try new things. You're in that comfort zone. It's not what you wanna do every time. You sometimes do need the hard rounds that challenge you where you get banged up, where things don't go as smooth as you want. But this type of sparring is a great way to start developing your style. Something I like that Siraj is doing for me is the stance switching because it's something that happens. With a lot of karate fighters there, they have that ability to switch from one foot leading to the other. I think this is just within his natural skill level, doing the stance switch, but maybe not, and he's just doing it to help me out. Not 100% sure. But either way, it is appreciated and is important. Something else which I really like to work on, or I've been trying to add in, is those, oh, right there, I threw one, as a knee. It's been a while, and you might have actually caught the other day, I posted some clench work that Siraj and I were, were doing together. 
Last camp I did zero clench work, zero prep for takedown defense, and I paid the price. This camp I've added a little bit more. I will continue in between camps to train and make sure that I'm keeping myself safe in those new areas. I'm not used to those takedowns. But still trying to add those knees back in is very important. And getting those calf kicks down too. Calf kicks are brutal. Take a couple of them sometimes, even with shin pads, and you go, oh my gosh, that could wreck somebody in a matter of like a handful of kicks. It doesn't take that much. Overall, with this footage, I like what I'm seeing. I don't know anything massive that I need to work on in particular. We're going to move into the third and final round in a moment here. I'll see if there's anything else that comes up which you know draws my attention to just small mistakes I could be making. You can note right there where I'm trying to keep my palms open. And this is an adjustment, which I'm not used to. And if you're thinking of doing MMA fighting, you should definitely be putting on those MMA gloves or smaller gloves and going palm open, trying to get used to that extra distance and protection you create by having an open palm, but also recognizing that closing the fist can actually damage you. Your own knuckles can damage you. This is one of the biggest things that I've had to work on throughout this camp is making sure I reopen my hand between punches. Trying to get those jabs a little bit tighter this camp, making sure I'm not telegraphing with the right hand leaving my head. I feel like I've had some good progress in that area. I've also been pushing the high kicks, just like that, trying to float them up, minimal effort, just get them there, place them out. I used to do that a lot when I was an amateur. Not worry about power, just flick. And a lot of people went down from my head kicks. But then I kind of got away from it. Started trying to make it instead of a knockdown, turn it into like a flat knockout. Increase that kicking power. And a lot of times it doesn't land because I'm forcing it. So fast placement is much better than overt, overused power, in my opinion. Let's talk about the pace of sparring here. When I would recommend utilizing this pace, who should be using this pace? I truly believe that there is a hard place for sparring. You've got to do it. It's the closest thing to the fight. But at the same time, it's sometimes good to recognize that this type of sparring can be used by beginners to up their skill level, stay safe, be confident. And then for anybody above the beginner skill level where you're going, oh, this is too slow. Well, this is when you really mentally dial in everything you've been working on. Try to really see if you're executing everything that's being practiced. And just even right there, just pressure forward, Give Siraj that little bit of ability to throw hands so I can work on the defense. That in tight is so important. It's great to be able to move your head. It's great to be able to evade shots, but you have to be able to protect yourself from the inside. It's what, in my opinion, makes the difference between fighters who stay very safe, protected, minimal damage, and the ones who end up getting knocked out far too many times just because they didn't focus on that in tight defense and that is all guys. Thanks for joining today. I will see you back here soon for another video.